going so ladies and gentlemen please put your hands together for the second act of this section with hazardous wastes we have john <laughs> Good evening. I'm John Mooney and uh, I'm what's known as a public health scientist. And some of you are already thinking that's got uh, something to do with drains and sewers or cleaning the lavies because it, it sounds like one of those slightly respectable terms for rotten jobs like binmen being referred to as waste hygiene engineers. <laughs> but uh, the reality of public health is, is a lot less glamorous. The public health scientists, we are, we're concerned with the uh, with the distribution of chronic disease and, and ill health in the population at large. And for me, large happens to be the operative word. <laughs> because um, our unit's remit is to solve the obesity crisis in Scotland. It doesn't come much bigger than that issue, do they? So, so as you can see, it's not hazardous waste I'm concerned with. But hazardous wastes. Well, that's, I thought it was a really clever title, but it tends to work better on paper, I'm afraid. So. <laughs> Moving swiftly on. So, Scotland, it may not surprise you to learn, is one of the fattest nations on earth. Well, nobody has it. <laughs> it's second only to the US of E and Mexico, well, that makes it third right enough, but. <laughs> my arithmetic was not my strong point. And now, turn to those, there are more overweight and obese individuals in Scotland than there are just about anywhere else. You know, and that's, that league table is subject to a lot of scientific uncertainty, so we could say there are a lot of big butts. But um, <laughs> it's, also, it's also a generalised country level statistic, so the, the fact that all of them, just about all of them live in Paisley, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't detract from the general validity of the measure. You know. So, um, actually, I shouldn't really slag off Paisley, you know, right? It just means, it just means that in Paisley, you know, they, they have to have, uh, uh, the trains need a, a, a bigger load capacity and uh, load the doors, but uh, as I say, I shouldn't slag off Paisley, really, because being originally from Greenock, us Greenockians, we need somewhere to slag off, you know. <laughs> Greenock's almost as bad as Leith that we were hearing about earlier on. Um, we get presents in our closes as well, but <laughs> moving swiftly on. No, um, yeah, once Grenokians are, are finished telling um, women from Dumfries that Dumfriesian is just another term for a silly cow, you know, <laughs> when someone else to slag. But um, moving swiftly on, that's me digressing. I hope there's no one from Dumfries in the audience. So back to the war on excess calorie consumption. So what the public health policy was of wants to know is, is Scotland a nation of fatties because we eat too many pies at half time? Or is it because prior to Murray Mania, our most popular sports were darts and snooker? Which, let's face it, they don't exactly constitute a good workout. I mean, the, the intriguing aspect though is, who would actually win in a fight between darts players and snooker players? You know? Long believe that blunt instruments versus sharp points and deadly accuracy. I don't know who my money would be on. But there I go, digressing again. You can see why I could never cut it as a lab scientist. I've got the concentration span of an absent-minded mosquito with attention deficit disorder. Now, where was I? Of course. So it's the, the big question is, is it the physical activity that we need to increase, or do we need to restrict all the rubbish food? You know, so from a, a kid's point of view, it's uh, do we ban ice cream vans altogether, or do we just make them drive faster? <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's not, just, it's not just a problem for kids. T a typical scenario, adults in Godwell's Leisure Centre last weekend, Tam and Ricky down the squash court. <laughs> are, 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 you all, are you all right there, Tam? I mean, they, they do, maybe we should have chosen something else. They do say that squash is only really for, uh, for uh, fit individuals. You know, it shouldn't be. It's not appropriate for uh, overweight, uh, middle-aged smokers with a, a body mass index of, of over 35. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're all right. <laughs> I'm fine. Come on! We've only got half an hour. We better get started. <laughs> and of course, you can imagine after the squash, they're just going to be nipping round to the greasy spoon round the corner, you know, for a slap up sausage and chips. Because, let's face it, the Scottish diet really is a lot of crap, isn't it? 
<laughs> you know, um, it's just, uh, there's one recent statistic which mentioned that 20% uh, of Scottish men hadn't knowingly eaten fresh vegetables in the last year. <laughs> <laughs> term there is knowing. <laughs> it's as if, is there some vile and monstrous heinous conspiracy that's determined to smuggle ground up asparagus, asparagus spears into their mints? Goodness me. But, um, yeah, but it's, there's so much rubbish in all that junk food, you know, animal fats, trans fats, saturated fats, as if that's not bad enough, did you hear about the guy that ate too much trans fats? He turned into a fat tranny. Shocking. <laughs> he, now, he now lives in a special diet of Rivita crackers washed down with pizza heavy. Lovely. <laughs> now, give it away your age if you remember that advert. And of course, another alternative, alternative interpretation is, would, sir, would you be liking some tomato in your horse burger? Nee, chance. I was asked to put in some horse humour, so hey, what could I do? Anyway, we wouldn't stop for long. So yeah, so what is the what is the answer from a Scottish government perspective? How are we gonna how are we gonna solve this obesity crisis? That's what that's what the policy wizards want to know. Well, actually, if you think about it, it it's relatively simple. If you because Scots may love their chips, but at the end of the day, we're stingy sods. Slap an extra ten p in that bottle of iron brew, and suddenly. The sparkle goes off the national drink, mm. and you just can't take the sparkle out of the uh, out of bars golden liquid, can you? That just that just wouldn't work. Just you can see the scenario, you know. Would uh, gonna get a bottle of iron brew? Well, certainly, sir. Would you prefer sparkling or still? You taking the piss, you doba? <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> You can imagine, I mean, um, everyone will be familiar, especially in the west of Scotland, that, um, we, that the popularity of um, the golden orange tipple amongst Scotland's more discerning consumers uh, means that any bottle of fizzy juice is, is, just gets called a bottle of ginger. <laughs> so you can imagine the Scottish Sun headline when our unit recommended a tax on fizzy drinks, front page, nanny state researchers propose a ginger tax. So you can imagine we spent a certain portion of uh, the next week or so trying to reassure a certain portion of the population that we weren't about to uh, introduce a politically incorrect victimisation tax. Which is, uh, people vigorously nodding in the audience. And I can, I can safely see the, the uh, director's phone call with Danny Alexander's office was particularly tense. <laughs> but, um, but moving swiftly on, I mean, back to the, back to the old, before I finish, back to the, um, the physical activity side, because let's face it, it's important, we should never forget the critical importance of increasing physical activity from an early age, you know. And I'm not just talking about legging it after speeding ice cream vans, or sort of Lamborghinis meets Nardinis. Wow! <laughs> can't like using the mic for sound effects, I'll notice that. But yeah, so just to motivate the younger members of the audience to get, um, to start getting into more physical activity, I've, um, I've got a special nursery rhyme from um, Scotland's favourite cuddly football uncle, Sir Alex Ferguson. Um, just bear with me a second. <laughs> Take a wee look. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water, but Jack fell down. Because he was not fit and he didn't believe in himself. He's not effing character. That's his trouble. I'm not doing anything much good. 